Let's welcome to the stage the CEO of the Wisconsin Center District, Mr. Marty Brooks. Now be careful here, this, this whole get up. Hi, friend. Uh. <laughs> you okay there? I'm good. good. Excellent. So uh, when did you move to town? You've been here a couple of years. Uh, I moved uh, January of last year. Last year, so a year and a half so far? A little over a year and a half. And how do you like Milwaukee now that you're here? Love Milwaukee. Yeah. It, it reminds me a lot of uh, Baltimore. I grew up in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And what I think I like most about the city is, and the surrounding areas, is just how genuine and warm uh, everyone is. I've, this is the fourth city that I've lived in for work, and uh, never have I been embraced by so many people. What you, don't, you all take advantage in, in living here is, uh, when you're interacting with people, many of these people you've known your whole life, uh, what we have found uh, from the day we moved in to as recently as this past weekend, no matter where we are, who we meet, people in Milwaukee, uh, when, you, when you're talking to them, whether it's someone at the uh, pharmacy or at the uh, food store, and they find that you're not from Milwaukee, big smile comes to their face and say one of two things, either welcome to Milwaukee or welcome to Wisconsin. And uh, that type of hospitality is spoken of for other cities, but I've never experienced it like I have here. And it's, it's a great place to live. Uh, I hope you all appreciate it. The quality of life here is outstanding. Yeah, the winters are cold, but you know that. And yeah. so you dress warmly yeah. and you plan your, your life accordingly. So it, it's been a great move for us and I, I love it here. So you are the CEO of the Wisconsin Center District. Some folks would say, what's a Wisconsin Center District? Can you tell us what makes up? Because it's more than some people understand. Tell us everything in your ecosystem. 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 That's an okay. extra shiny word. Well, we are a quasi-government agency, um, over 20 years old, and we uh, take we, we're responsible for the property between Fourth and Sixth, and Wisconsin, and uh, to the north side of Kilbourne. Our, our holdings are the Wisconsin Center, the Convention Center, uh, the UWM Panther Arena, and the Miller High Life Theater, and then the parking space that's between. Uh, Kilbourne and, and Wells, we also won. Okay. So you've got a few things going on, as, as you could say. We do. Right? We're busy. I'd like to talk about the DNC, which is coming up next year. And also, remember that thing? Did you get the email on that? <laughs> it's a thing. I forgot. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot. We'll talk after. And, uh, of course, the expansion, which is no small potato either. So let's start with the DNC. What part of the DNC coming here did you play, and what is your team, like how was the reaction when the, I don't know, email went around, but what was it like when you got it? We were involved for the past a uh, little over a year. I think when I joined in January, in February, March, we started talking with Alex Lazary and the local host uh, committee to put together the bid. And uh, obviously the uh, general sessions themselves are going to be in the FISER forum. That was always uh, going to be the, the anchor for the convention. But in, in supporting the convention with 50,000 people, they need other spaces. Uh, so they've leased from us the Wisconsin Center, the Mill High Life Theater, uh, the UWM Panther Arena, and the parking lots from the first week of June until the 26th of July. Um, we have not yet been told uh, what they're going to be using our space for yet. Uh, we should hear that by uh, middle of next month, they're meeting and all of the different property users from the DNC will be told what spaces they have. Mm -hmm. But we, we, it, it looks like the third level, our exhibition space, will be the uh, media center okay. for the uh, convention. And then the uh, Panther Arena and some of our meeting rooms will be used for the different caucus sessions. Okay. So your organization is big and this is a very big project. Thinking about small business owners in the room, sometimes we take on projects that don't seem big to an organization your size, but they're big risks for us. So big news gets dropped on us. Well, this is big news that got dropped on even a big organization. What did you think when you realized, okay, I have to get my team ready for this? As the leader, what went through your mind about getting people ready? First was, oh, we got it. Uh, and now we're, how are we going to pull this off? Yeah. Um, you've said a couple of times we're a big organization. Mm, not really. We're not much bigger 
than uh, Summerfest is. I was surprised when Sarah said 45 full-time employees. We have 68 full-time employees. Huh? We are, our part-time base is 225 people. We do use a number of uh, third-party contractors. Levy Restaurants does uh, our food and beverage service. Uh, CTI does our technology, uh, audiovisual services for the complex. Uh, when we got it, uh, it, it's funny, the announcement came shortly after Mayor Barrett had done a state of the city address uh, at the Pfizer Forum, and everyone was expecting the announcement to be made there, and it wasn't. I got back to the office, and one of the staff said, congratulations, we got it. What are you talking about? We got it. And that's how I found out. And um, I screamed. It, 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 is, it was a real rush to be able to uh, now move forward and be a part of what's going to be a transformational event for our city. Yeah. Um, I know this isn't really what you asked us, but we have seen, as has Visit Milwaukee, a ridiculous increase in the inquiries for what's Milwaukee about, what kind of convention space do you have, tell us about your hotel package. We've seen uh, multiple visits uh, for people, event planners, looking to look at this market who have, would have never considered our city before uh, seeing that we were uh, awarded the DNC. Uh, the credibility, it, top of mind awareness, all that. And, and I, I have every confidence in the world that this city can pull it off. It's a huge event, and it's yeah, a huge, huge responsibility. We got this. The city has this. We, we've got great professionals in here. It, yeah. it, it's going to be, I'm not going to say it's easy. Yeah. It's going to be great, and we're going to pull it off, and it's going to be ridiculously memorable for everybody who comes here. So two parts. First, let's talk about the DNC, then I have a question about the expansion. As far as the DNC, sharing the vision with your team and getting their buy-in to pull this off as being the hosts, like the facilities, how did you go about doing that so they were all seeing the same vision that you were seeing? Well, I'm going to give you a shameless plug. Um, Me a shameless plug? Oh, yeah, a shameless plug. And it's okay. not about radio. Um, we, uh, when I joined the organization, it was a fairly dysfunctional organization. It had been uh, run and staffed by people who uh, really were not from the sports venue or entertainment business. Uh, most of the full-time employees had been there anywhere from five to 40 years and had never had a job other than the Wisconsin Center. Most were former uh, city employees who had worked with the city when it was uh, the Mecca. Um, I needed help in developing a vision, a CEO vision that I could share with the staff to energize them. All of this completely <coughs> separate from the DNC, uh, we engaged you. Uh, we had the good fortune to meet when you were still in radio, known yeah. as JPAT back yeah, then. Yeah, back then. Not That's not previous slide. Yeah. Um, but um, <laughs> you helped me develop a, a, a statement, that, a CEO vision that could be used to share with the organization uh, exactly what our, our mission was. and it's. Uh, it's three or four sentences. I don't remember it offhand, but it's basically to make the experiences that people have at the Wisconsin Center memorable and buzzworthy experiences. And we, we narrowed it down to three key pillars. Be bold, be proud, be experience obsessed. And we rolled that out in March. We found out about the DNC several weeks afterwards. And I've really worked hard, and the group has worked hard, to uh, have the staff buy into the fact that this is a great place to work. Uh, we had done an employee engagement survey for the first time in our 20 year history in December of last year and found out a couple things that are pretty obvious that you should be doing them for a good business and that's communicate with your staff, tell them what the plans are, involve them in decision making, none of which was being done. Uh, so we've changed the culture. Uh, so when we got the DNC, we were on a path for buy-in. We were on a path of being, uh, feeling good about what we did. No one had ever, uh, shared with the new organization, nice job, hey, that was really good. Yeah. The staff was beaten up, and uh, it, it's been easy to change because it was so poorly managed beforehand. And for those who came before me in the job, I, I, I don't mean to speak ill of them. Um, they were, uh, they did their best, they just weren't right for the job. And um, we've had a real turnaround, and I look forward to the years to come. So when you put the employee first in that way, and you bring them closer to you as the leader, how did they respond? I mean, they, it seemed like they responded well, but you were doing it very purposefully. So as a leader bringing their staff closer, how did it go? It, it's gone well, but uh, it's funny, we've had some follow-up meetings in the past several weeks, and I was the one, of the, when, when we were asked to go, senior leadership was asked to go around the room and tell us how you think the employees rate us, uh -huh. and I gave us a fairly high uh, ranking as far as how the staff viewed management in our communication. 
during this, uh, simultaneous to this training that I'm giving the senior leadership uh, team, I'm also doing it to the next level of, of, of leadership in the organization. And when we saw their results, they were not as uh, uh, positive in how they felt with it, about yeah. how we're doing. So I think there's a, a fair amount of skepticism. Uh, this is still relatively new in changing the culture in the organization. We rolled it out in March. It's only, what, six months later. Right. Uh, but it's, it's a matter of continuous reinforcement, sharing information. Uh, we have, uh, every other month I have a board meeting. I report to a seven-member board. And after the, right after the meeting, um, we, we email to, to everyone the CEO notes so that they know what we've talked about and they're not hearing about what we're doing through the radio or through the newspaper. They're getting it directly from me as soon as it's happening. Which is, to them, uh, absurd. They've it's never had any inclusion like that. Correct. All right, let's move to the expansion for a second because I think it's very much something we could all experience as small business owners when we think about I'm going to try and do something big to improve and grow the business. Yours just happened to be an expansion of your you know, facilities. Go to the early stage ideation. We need to expand. What was that process like to even start putting things up on the whiteboard of, oh, we need this much space? Like, How did you come up with what you wanted to ask for? Not how you asked for it. I'm going to ask for that too. But first, what do we want to do, guys? Like, How did you start that process and lead that process? In fairness, that process has been going on since 2012. Oh. Uh, the one thing our organization has done is spent a lot of money doing study after study and going nowhere with it. Um, some study, a number of studies were underway uh, before I joined the organization starting in 2017 that uh, were finally rolled out in the summer of 2018 after I had a chance to review them and make some modifications to what was being looked at. Um, but what we, we what would had been done is we contracted with a nationally known, uh, reputable uh, organization to go out and do an analysis between us and and those cities that we want either that are either in our comp set or our aspirational set. Yeah. And comparable markets are Louisville, um, Columbus, Cincinnati, Cleveland. Um, aspirational is Indianapolis, St. Louis. Chicago is really a whole yeah. level beyond that. So we, we identified what what's amount of space we needed from an, an exhibition level, ballroom, meeting room space, and came up with a plan that is uh, looking to almost double the footprint of our existing space, depending upon how it gets laid out on the property. Uh, so that, that's what we've done. So when it comes, what will that do for you? Why do you need the additional space? What will that mean for the WCB? The, the biggest reason for the expansion, uh, certainly we will benefit and be able to go after larger conventions that, mm -hmm. that have more attendees, need more exhibition space. That's not the, 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 the catalyst to this expansion. The real opportunity for us is to be able to do more events of the same size, either simultaneously or on the heels of one another. Uh, the example that I use, I mean, and our business model is predicated on the hotel tax. We get a a, a two and a half percent from the county, seven percent from the city. We also get uh, two and a half percent from food and beverage sales. So we're all about heads and beds. Yeah. Uh, for a a normal a, a medium-sized convention, let's say they're in the building for four nights. Well, it takes, and on those four nights, those are four nights of peak attendance. So you could have, let's say, two thousand room nights uh, each of those mm -hmm. nights. But the event may take a week to load in and two days to load out, so the building's out of pocket for seven, 11 days, mm -hmm. of which are really only money-making for the hoteliers for four nights. Right. If we're able to double the size, we can either have two events of the same size going on simultaneously, or one loading in while the other's occurring, or loading out while one is loading in. Sure. So it's gonna dramatically increase the number of visitors that we're gonna have, so it means more hotel room nights, uh, and more uh, business for restaurants, bars, and all the other services in the city. So the plan in hand, then you had to be the face of the sales of it. You had to get the money, you had to get it approved, you had to go through the legislature, you had to go through the board, you had to go through your team, you had to go through everybody. As the leader, how did you think about doing that? How did you think about the campaign of getting the yes so it could move forward? Wow, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> all right, there's one, all right. I, I think first and foremost, it, it's been for me not thinking about what we can't do or let's just do our jobs the way they are. I, I want to learn every day. I want to do something bigger and better and want to have fun at what I do. And the same old isn't, 
That's not why I came here. And you want to do more shows. You want to be busy. And, and to keep things status quo, um, I've been able to instill in the staff, not only do they have the capacity to do it, they have the talent to do it. Uh, they've, they've sat back for the past couple of years and seen the success that the Bucks have had, the uh, building of the Pfizer Forum. It's, a, it's an incredible facility. It's done great things for the city. Us too. We want to do that too. Yeah. So I think the staff is uh, is energized to be a part of something that that is uh, that they'll be proud of instead of something they're beaten up about. Yeah, uh, we're almost done, almost out of time. Uh, but I do want to get uh, a little bit from you. When we were talking before the interview, you shared some really powerful stuff about bringing your team in on the decisions and explaining what's in it for them if they help you accomplish something. And I know it's part of your philosophy. Can you give us a little bit about that as far as management and bringing your team along for the ride? Absolutely. Uh, Buy-in is, is critical. In, in our business, the hospitality business, it really, well, what I do makes an impact, but the people who are touching our clients, that be the, the meeting planner or the attendee for either a conference convention or a public show, is our guest services staff and our frontline staff for Levy Restaurants. So we've really invested in them this past year to, to make them feel uh, important about what they do. What they do matters. I share with them that they're the ones that are impacting how the business uh, will grow because of, of, of their success. Uh, I used to say in the, re the arena business, uh, we don't control the songs that the artist plays or how loud they play it. Uh, but we greet the people when they come and we tell them to drive home safely and thank them for coming when they get here. So uh, we touch the experience that the people have and, and we're really looking to improve that and, uh, and make it be transformational. If you manage people for a living, Marty's someone to look up to. You do a great job of doing it. I've been in staff meetings with him when he talks with his team and uh, very few leaders have the emotional range to be the boss and also give and listen at the same time and you do a great job of that so if you manage for a living you should connect with marty because uh he's spectacular and congratulations on your success thank you and uh, we're all cheering for you thanks for coming thank by you. marty this brooks wisconsin center district thank you sir that's one small step for man one giant leap for mankind